Horrid Henry, early reader. Horrid Henry's thank you letter. Chapter One. Ah, this was the life. A sofa, a telly, a bag of crisp. Horrid Henry sighed happily. Henry! Shouted Mom from the kitchen. Are you watching TV? Henry blocked his ears. Nothing was going to interrupt his new favorite TV program, Terminator Gladiator. Answer me, Henry! Shouted Mom. Have you written your Christmas thank you letters? No! Bellowed Henry. Why not? Screamed Mom. Because I haven't, said Henry. I'm busy. Couldn't she leave him alone for two seconds? Mom marched into the room and switched off the TV. Hey, said Henry. I'm watching Terminator Gladiator. Too bad, said Mom. I told you, no TV until you've written your thank you letters. It's not fair, wailed Henry. I've written all my thank you letters, said Perfect Peter. Well done, Peter, said Mom. Thank goodness, one of my children has good manners. Peter smiled modestly. I always write mine the moment I unwrap a present. I'm a good boy, aren't I? The best, said Mom. Oh, shut up, Peter, snarled Henry. Mom, Henry told me to shut up, said Peter. Stop being hurried, Henry. You will write to Aunt Ruby, Great Aunt Greta, and Grandma now. Now, moaned Henry. Can't I do it later? When's later? Said Dad. Later, said Henry. Why wouldn't they stop nagging him about those stupid letters? Chapter 2 Heard Henry hated writing thank you letters. Why should he waste his precious time saying thank you for presents? Time he could be spending reading comics or watching TV. But no, he would barely unwrap a present before mom started nagging. She even expected him to write to great aunt Greta and thank her for the baby poopy pants doll. Great aunt Greta for one did not deserve a thank you letter. This year, Aunt Ruby had sent him a hideous lime green cardigan. Why should he thank her for that? True, Grandma had given him 15 pounds, which was great. But then, Mom had to spoil it by making him write her a letter, too. Henry hated writing letters for nice presents, every bit as much as he hated writing them for horrible ones. You have to write thank you letters, said Dad. But why? said Henry. Because it's polite, said Dad. Because people have spent time and money on you, said Mom. So what? thought hurried Henry. Grown-ups had loads of time to do whatever they wanted. No one told them, stop watching TV and write a thank you letter. Oh no, they could do it whenever they felt like it, or not even do it at all. And adults had tons of money compared to him. Why shouldn't they spend it buying him presents? All you have to do is write one page, 
said Dad. What's the big deal? Henry stared at him. Did Dad have no idea how long it would take him to write one whole page? Hours and hours. And hours. You are the meanest, most horrible parents in the world, and I hate you! Shrieked hurried Henry. Go to your room, Henry! Shouted Dad. And don't come down until you've written those letters, shouted Mom. I am sick and tired of arguing about this. Hurried Henry stopped upstairs. Chapter 3 Well, no way was Henry writing any thank you letters. He'd rather starve. He'd rather die. He'd stay in his room for a month, a year. One day, Mom and Dad would come up to check on him, and all they'd find would be a few bones. Then they'd be sorry. Actually, knowing them, they'd probably just moan about the mess, and then Peter would be all happy because he'd get Henry's room, and Henry's room was bigger. Well, no way would he give them the satisfaction. All right, thought hurried Henry. Dad said to write one page. In his biggest, most gigantic handwriting, Henry wrote, Dear Aunt Ruby, Thank you for the present, Henry. That certainly filled a whole page, thought hurried Henry. Mom came into the room. Have you written your letters yet? Yes, lied Henry. Mom glanced over his shoulder. Henry, said Mom, that is not a proper thank you letter. Yes, it is, snarled Henry. Dad said I had to write one page, so I wrote one page. Write five sentences, said Mom. Five sentences? Five whole sentences? It was completely impossible for anyone to write so much. His hand would fall off. That's way too much wailed Henry. No TV until you write your letters, said Mom, leaving the room. Chapter 4 Hurried Henry stuck out his tongue. He had the meanest, most horrible parents in the world. When he was king, any parent who even whispered the words Thank you letter would get fed to the crocodiles. They wanted five sentences? He'd give them five sentences. Henry picked up his pencil and scrawled. Dear Aunt Ruby, No, thank you for the horrible present. It is the worst present I have ever had. Anyway, didn't some old Roman say it was better to give than to receive? So, in fact, you should be writing me a thank you letter. Henry, P.S. Next time just send money. There, five whole sentences. Perfect, thought hurried Henry. Mom said he had to write a five sentence thank you letter. She never said it had to be a nice thank you letter. Suddenly, Henry felt quite cheerful. He folded the letter and popped it in the stamped envelope Mom had given him. One down, two to go. In fact, Aunt Ruby's no thank you letter would do just fine for Great Aunt Greta. He'd just substitute Great Aunt Greta's name for Aunt Ruby's and copy the rest. Bingo! 
another letter was done. Now, Grandma, she had sent money so he'd have to write something nice. Thank you for the money, blah, blah, blah. Best present I've ever received, blah, blah, blah. Next year, send more money. Fifteen pounds isn't very much. Ralph got twenty dollars from his grandma, blah, blah, blah. What a waste! As he signed it and put it in the envelope, to spend so much time on a letter, only to have to write the same old thing all over again next year. And then suddenly, her and Henry had a wonderful, spectacular idea. Why had he never thought of this before? He would be rich, rich, rich. There goes money bags, Henry. Kids would whisper enviously as he swaggered down the street, followed by Peter lugging a hundred DVDs for Henry to watch in his mansion on one of his twenty-eight giant TVs. Mom and Dad and Peter would be living in their hovel somewhere, and if they were very, very nice to him, Henry might let them watch one of his smaller TVs for fifteen minutes or so once a month. Henry was going to start a business, a business guaranteed to make him rich. Chapter 5 Step right up, step right up, said hurried Henry. He was wearing a sign saying, Henry's thank you letters, personal letters written just for you. A small crowd of children gathered round him. I'll write all your thank you letters for you, said Henry. All you have to do is to give me a stamped addressed envelope and tell me what present you got. I'll do the rest. How much for a thank you letter? asked Kung Fu Kate. One pound, said Henry. No way, said Greedy Graham. Ninety-nine penny, said Henry. Forget it, said Lazy Linda. Okay, fifty penny, said Henry. And two for seventy-five penny. Done, said Linda. Henry opened his notebook. And what were the presents? He asked. Linda made a face. Handkerchiefs, she spat, and a bookmark. I can do a no thank you letter, said Henry. I'm very good at those, Linda considered. Tempting, she said, but then mean Uncle John won't send something better next time. Business was brisk. Dave bought three, Ralph bought four, no thank yous. Even Moody Margaret bought one. Whoopee! thought hurried Henry. His pockets were jingle-jangling with cash. Now, all he had to do was write seventeen letters. Henry tried not to think about that. Chapter 6 The moment he got home from school, Henry went straight to his room. Right to work, thought Henry. His heart sank as he looked at the blank pages. All those letters! He would be here for weeks. Why had he ever set up a letter-writing business? But then, hurried Henry thought. True, he'd promised a personal letter, but how would Linda's aunt ever find out that Margaret's granny had received the same one? She wouldn't. If he used the computer, it would be a cinch. And it would be a letter sent personally, thought Henry. 
because I am a person and I will personally print it out and send it. All he'd have to do was to write the names at the top and to sign them. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Then again, all that signing and writing all those names at the top and separating the thank you letters from the no thank you ones. Maybe there was a better way. Hurried Henry sat down at the computer and typed. Dear sir or madam, that should cover everyone, thought Henry. And I won't have to write anyone's name. Thank you or no thank you for the A. Wonderful B. Horrible C. Disgusting present. I really loved or hated it. In fact, it is the best present or worst present I have ever received. I played with it, or broke it, or ate it, or spent it, threw it in the bin straight away. Next time, just send lots of money, best wishes, or worst wishes. Now, how to sign it? Aha, thought Henry. Your friend or relative. Perfect, thought hurried Henry. Sir or madam knows whether they deserve a thank you or a no thank you letter. Let them do some work for a change and take the correct answers. Print, print, print. Out spewed seventeen letters. It only took a moment to stuff the letters in the envelopes. He'd pop them in the post box on the way to school. Had an easier way to become a millionaire ever been invented? Thought hard Henry as he turned on the tally. Ding dong! It was two weeks after Henry set up Henry's thank you letters. Hurried Henry opened the door. A group of Henry's customers stood there, waving pieces of paper and shouting. My granny sent the letter back and now I can't watch TV for a week, wailed Moody Margaret. I'm grounded, screamed Aerobic Al. I have to go swimming, screamed Lazy Linda. No sweets, yelled Greedy Graham. No pocket money, screamed Rude Ralph. And it's all your fault, they shouted. Hurried Henry glared at his angry customers. He was outraged. After all his hard work, this was the thanks he got? Too bad, said Hurried Henry as he slammed the door. Honestly, there was no pleasing some people. Henry, said Mom, I just had the strangest phone call from Aunt Ruby.